So today, the title of my message is The Infilling of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, Infilling. infilling. Jesus came, born of a virgin, preached on the kingdom of God, died on the cross, buried in the tomb, rose from the dead on the third day, and then was caught up into heaven 40 days later. Do you believe that? Yes. That's the gospel truth, amen? That's the gospel truth. And it's, it was important for Jesus to go away so that he could send the promise of the Father that he had made to the people, that there was going to be another, one just like Jesus that was going to come, amen? And God keeps his promises. He's not a man that she, he should lie. He keeps his promises. And that's why, you know, when it, even when it comes to tithing, he, he says, you know, try me now in this and see if I'll not open up the windows of heaven to you. See, we trust in that, amen. We believe for that, that God's going to open the windows of heaven to us and do the work. So, but this is the truth that we believe in. That makes us believers in Jesus Christ. Everybody say believer. believer. And a believer is Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Amen. We've, we've done that already. You, I, I, I presented it. You said yes. So you've confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus today. Amen. Just by that confession of saying, I believe, or, you know, confessing, saying, amen, you're a believer in Jesus Christ. And so being a believer, Eric, entitles you to things. I know we don't like to talk about entitlement, but you're, you have access to things now because of being a believer in Christ. Now, I do not have more access than you. I don't. The word of God is written to every person. Amen. So everybody that reads it, everybody that believes on it, we all have the same access. Now, I may have a different calling than you, but we all have the same access to the promises of God, to the word of God, to the promises of God. And we know that a true believer puts their whole trust in God, amen, that trusts to him and it believes for his promises because his promises are yes and amen to who? To them that believe. So we can trust God in this. John 14, 16, it says, I read this last week, it said, I'll pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever, okay? So this is the promise that God says. Jesus said, I'm gonna... Send another one, and it says the helper, and that helper means someone just like Jesus. So you can look at what Jesus did, the things that Jesus did, the way he lived his life, and God says, I'm sending someone just like him, you know, and as it goes on in the scripture, that was with you in the form of Christ, and it now will be in you in the form of the Holy Spirit. So everything that Jesus had walking this earth is now being deposited in us. So that we can do what? The things that Jesus did. And then at the ascension, he to, Jesus told them this in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 4. He said, being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait. Everybody say wait. wait. For the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. So he told them, I want you to wait in Jerusalem for the promise. Amen. And sometimes we do wait. Sometimes we, we have to wait. I remember when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I was dating Delonda. It was Thanksgiving Day. I was 18 years old and, and I was at her house and, and we gathered together in the living room to pray for her grandma and some people that had to drive back to Burbank. And so we're holding hands there in the living room and we're praying. And Delonda's dad looked down at me and he said, because he was, he was a big man, he was about 6'3". And uh, he looked down at me and, and he said, Ron, have you been filled with the Holy Spirit yet? And I wasn't quite sure what that meant. It, come on over here. There's some seats over here, Andy. I, I invite you right over here. Come sit in the front with me, brother. This is my good friend, Andy and Jerry. Praise God. So he looked at me and said, have you received the Holy Spirit yet? I said, no. See, I mean, I was raised in the assemblies of God, but I... Lucia, I didn't know, I wasn't taught as a kid about, you know, being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, like we teach our kids. I, I, I didn't know about it. And so when he said that, and, and I said, I want everything God has for me. He said, all right. 
took his big old hand, put it on my head, and he prayed. Man, I got filled, and I prayed in tongues. Dawn is sitting here smiling because she'll never forget that day, man. We were just dating. And you know what? She broke up with me after that because now I was too good. Now that's what she thought. <laughs> Sorry, honey. I'll give you your chance later. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit hit me for two hours. All I did was pray in tongues. Everybody that was leaving sat down and watched me. They sat me down in a chair finally. And, and I said, Water! about an hour into it, and they brought me a glass of water, and I just kept praying and praying and praying in tongues. You know, and for me, that's how I know it's so real. You know, and, and then the thousands of people that, that I know, that I've seen, that I laid hands on, because I'm a lay hands on kind of guy, and because uh, you know, Paul was a lay hands on kind of guy. Paul got, somebody laid hands on him to receive. He laid hands on people, but Peter just spoke and the people got filled. See, it's just your preference. And today we're just going to speak and you'll be filled today. Amen. You'll be filled. Hallelujah. Oh, you're going to sing. You're going to be filled overflowing today with the Holy Spirit. Amen. That the Holy Spirit is coming into you today and there's going to be that river that flows out of you today. So the promise of the Holy Spirit has been sent to us. The Holy Spirit was to be sent on the day of Pentecost, which it happened, and that's today, amen. The Holy Spirit is sent to us to empower us to finish the work, amen, the work of Christ, of evangelizing the world. We're not getting filled with the Holy Spirit just so that we can pray in tongues. We're getting filled with the Holy Spirit so we can be empowered to finish the work that Jesus Christ has given us, amen, that we go and we do the work. You know, that our nation's in turmoil right now. It's a great opportunity to finish the work. Amen. It's a great opportunity for the body of Christ to rally and to pray. Amen. You know, I mean, I'm okay with protests, but I'm not okay with riots. Amen. We need to stand up. We need to pray. We need to pray like never before that these people would not, not that God would wipe them off the face of the earth, but they'd have an encounter with God. Amen. We got to, we got to stop praying destruction and we got to start praying salvation. Amen. We got to start believing for souls to come into the kingdom of God. And that's your job. You're empowered to go. Everybody say go. You're empowered. That's your role. That's your call. The Holy Spirit fills you with gifts and he fills you with fruit so that when you go, you go empowered, amen, you go and you're shining with the love of God as you walk in the fruit of the Spirit. The love of God is just on you. You're kind, you're gentle, you're peaceable, amen, you're filled with joy. You know, people say, well, how could you be filled with joy with all this stuff going on around you? Jesus, amen. Jesus, oh, man, I can just feel it just like run through me right now. But the fruit of the Spirit needs to be evident in you. The, the, the gifts of the Spirit need to be evident in you, amen? The power of God needs to be in you, flowing through you. As I talked about last week, that river that flows through you, amen? And the fruit of the Spirit is based on love. It's based on love. The fruit of the Spirit is based on love. If you don't have the love of God in you, the fruit will not be evident. If you don't love God and love people, you got a problem already. Then, then the Father's not in you. If you don't love God and love people, you, you don't have the love of the Father in you. If you say, I love God, but you hate your brother, the love of God is not in you. Amen. If you, if you say, I love God, but I'm a racist, you, then the love of God is not in you. You're, you're lying to yourself. There's no room for racism in the body of Christ. Can I hear an amen? amen. Not an inch. You can't be racist and serve God. Now, I know a lot of people were raised that way. You were raised to be racist, and, and that's, that's something you got to battle. You got to overcome it, amen? You got to let the love of God flow in you so that um, the love of God comes out of you. See, because if, if you don't have love, but yet you have, you're, you're walking in the gifts, it means nothing. You can, you can prophesy till the cows come home, but if you don't love, it means nothing. It's like clanging symbols to the spirit. You can heal the sick, raise the dead, but if you don't have the love of God in you, 
It doesn't matter, Mark. It's, it's, God's going to say, I don't know you. I don't know you. Depart from me. That's what he'll say in the end. You have to have the love of God. The, the Galatians chapter 5, it says, in verse 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. I mean, and that's what, I mean, as we were singing, you know, that's what we should have been doing is crucifying our flesh, amen? We should have been killing off those things that have been disturbing us, that have been bothering us, that have been nagging us. We got to get rid of that stuff, amen? Get rid of it. And it says, verse 25, it says, if you live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. See, if you live in the Spirit, if you say you're a Christian, you need to act like you're a Christian. That's what it means. If, if you... Live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. If you say, oh, I live, the Holy Spirit has filled me, then you better, it should be evident. There should be fruit. That's what he's saying. You've got to have the fruit if you say you live in the Spirit. You've got to be kind. You've got to be gentle. You've got to be peaceable. You've got to be filled with the love of God. Amen? That's, otherwise, you're lying. <laughs> uh. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, there will be evidence. There will be evidence. First, like I said, in 1 Corinthians 13, it talks about, you know, it's all about love. But it says if you don't have love, it, you're, you're wasting your time. Perfect love in you with the power of the Holy Spirit working in you will bring the fruit of the Spirit to the surface in your life. If you allow him to work in you, that love will grow. That love will grow. The peace in you will grow. The, the uh, faithfulness will grow. But you got to let the Holy Spirit do a work in you because, you know, sometimes we're, we're like that. We're like that diamond. But you know where a diamond comes from, right? It comes from that lump of coal, you know, that's been under fire, been under pressure. You know, and then even when it comes out, that diamond doesn't have all those beautiful facets on it and everything. Somebody goes in there and he puts those facets on that diamond very tenderly, very gently. And that's how the Holy Spirit works in us. He works in us tenderly and gently to take those, put the facets of God in our life, to put that love, that joy, that peace, that kindness, goodness, faithfulness, that self-control in our life. That's what the Holy Spirit does. But we gotta submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit to say, do it, do it in me. How many of you want the Holy Spirit to do it in you? Amen. Amen. Well, today we're going to focus on being filled. Step one, be a believer in Jesus. We've established that already. We already went through what a believer is. We've established that you believe, amen? amen. Well, that's pretty weak. Maybe not. Maybe I need to go back and start over. We believe, we believe in Jesus, right? Yeah. All right. So that's step one, you're a believer. Step two, all you got to do is ask for it. You just got to ask. You just got to ask him to fill you with the spirit. Amen. You know, I, I, people tell me all, all the time, it can't be that easy. It's like, why not? There's nothing difficult about the kingdom of God. The only thing difficult about the kingdom of God is our flesh. <laughs> That's the only thing that gets in the way. But he says, ask, ask, and he'll give it to you. Ask and receive. Amen. So we, we ask and we receive. What are you asking for? What have you been asking the Holy Spirit for? Amen. The Holy Spirit will fill you and empower you, as I said last week, to do miracles. To do miracles. We're asking for miracles today. Many people. I'm asking for a miracle today. You're asking for a miracle today. I believe God's going to do it. Amen. I believe God, one way or another, God's going to do it. Mark 16 it says this, it says, these signs will follow those who believe, those who believe. Say, I believe. I believe. I'm going to describe you right now. You ready? In my name, they cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So we have authority over demons. We can speak in new tongues. 
Um, we have protection from serpents and anything deadly. Amen. And then we can lay hands on the sick and they recover. That's the believer. These are the things that we're empowered to do. This is what God is calling you to do. This is going to help us to finish the work of Christ. Amen. Now, if you follow the steps in the Bible of being filled with the Holy Spirit, you'll see that step three is to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. We get impatient. I mean, we're trying to do our services. <sighs> I don't know what time I came up here. <laughs> I got 14 pages of notes today. <laughs> it's hard to do in a, you know, squeeze all that great worship, Liz, and, and 14 pages of notes into an hour. You know, but I know today we don't have anything right after us, so we got time. So he told the disciples, stay in Jerusalem till you're filled. Stay in the church till you fill. Stay till you know you're filled. Amen. Stay till you know. You need to be filled with the Spirit to be effective in the ministry of witnessing to others. You have to have the Spirit to go and do it. Amen. You've got to be empowered. I know when Delon and I have been in other countries, and we're meeting with uh, other Americans or people from Europe that were there in those countries to minister. And Delon and I would talk with them, and it's like they have no clue about the Holy Spirit. And, and I'm like, how are you even here? And, and I'm thinking in my head, who sent you? Who sent you without power? I, I remember one day I was preaching in an in international church. And this man came up to me and he, and he said, hey, listen, um, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, sure, what's up? And he goes, why does my wife cry every time you preach? I said, the Holy Spirit. He goes, what's the Holy Spirit? I said, let's go to lunch. <laughs> See, because in the international church, you got Catholics, Presbyterians, Methodists, you know. So they didn't want me to preach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I don't know how preaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit could offend anyone. Because it's the Word of God. Amen. So, but he, step four as you're filled with the Holy Spirit, speak in new tongues. You all have an old tongue. Trust me. You all have that old tongue. A lying tongue, a flattering tongue, a deceitful tongue, a cursing tongue. As I was, I was, I was reading Proverbs today, I, <coughs> I, I was like, oh my gosh. Because it was talking about the words coming out of our mouth. Getting a new tongue has improved my English. It's improved, really improved my English, trust me. But, it, but it's also given me a heavenly language that only God can understand. That when I pray in tongues, only God gets it. Only God can interpret it, amen? Unless I'm standing up here and I speak prophetically in the spirit and somebody interprets it, amen? But a heavenly language has replaced my, my bad old English language. And he says, death and life are in the power of your tongue. And the Lord told me a long time ago, he said, the more you pray in the spirit, the more life you're gonna produce. I'm like, wow. So that means the less I pray in the spirit, the less life I'm gonna produce. So when I don't pray in the spirit, chances are I'm gonna produce some death. Praying in the spirit, I... I I shared this Friday night in prayer when we were praying Friday night. Somebody that had been filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues came to me and said, yeah, I don't need to do that. And I said, everybody needs to do it. No, no, I'm good not praying in tongues. It's, it doesn't do anything. I said, it does. You know, and as, as she was dying, she said, I wish I had your faith. I said, well, we all have this, the same measure of faith. It's just, what are you doing with the faith God gives you? Are you praying in the spirit? Are you using, are you stirring it up? Acts chapter two, one through four. Yeah, it's a, you got it, okay. <laughs> when the day at Pentecost had fully come, they were, with all, they were all with one accord in one place. Everybody say unity. unity. They were united, amen? They were, they were together those 10 days, all 120 of them. You know, they elected a new, new apostle. 
And they were hanging out together, they were praying, and they were all waiting for the same thing. And verse 2, it says, and suddenly, and I believe that God is bringing suddenlies upon you. You've been waiting on things, you've been uh, hearing from heaven, and you've been waiting and sitting. But I'm telling you, you know, we set these chairs five weeks ago, six weeks ago, because we're ready for a suddenly. That they go, suddenly you can go. And so you got to get prepared for your suddenly. Stop just sitting back waiting for God to do all the work. Get in position so that when the suddenly comes, you're ready to move. Amen. Because suddenly there came a sound from heaven and they were in position. They were in that place of unity. They were in the position to receive what God had for them. Sound came from heaven as a mighty rushing wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then, everybody say then. There appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat on each of them. It was, it's not that they saw fire, it just, uh, their tongue began to move like it was on fire. Amen, that's what happened. They began to move, it's like, whoa. You know, when you've never seen it, it's amazing. I, I know Delon and I, we, I told you last week, we laid hands on 60 pastors one time. And man, when they started praying in tongues, it was, it was incredible, man. And they were freaked out because they'd never heard this before. They didn't know the teaching about it. They read the Bible, but nobody had ever told them that it was real. And when we laid hands on them, they were screaming in tongues. And they were just going and going and going. And it's was like, yes, that's what it's supposed to be. They were all filled. Everybody say all. Oh. With the Holy Spirit. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. First time I went to Peru, I preached Mark 16, being filled and with the Spirit speaking in tongues. And I went through the whole process and 350 people in this movie theater. And um, I said, if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, get up and come down here. Every person got up and came down there. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> I'm thinking, Jerry, what do I do? <laughs> I said, Lord, what do I do? I mean, because everybody ran to the front. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And the Lord laughed at me. Because I said, what do I do? He said, aren't you glad you're not the one that fills them? Amen. I'm like, amen. It's not me, amen. It's, and then I had this guy. I had this guy come. And he came forward. He wanted to speak in tongues so bad. And I laid hands on him. Man, I felt the impartation of the Spirit just go. And he comes up to me at the end of the night, Elizabeth. He says, I didn't pray in tongues. I said, I'm sorry. He says, well, what are you going to do? I said, it's not my fault. I said, I'm not the one that fills you. It's the Lord. And I said, I prayed for you. I laid hands on you. And I know the Spirit of God went in you by the, just the power of God that I could feel flowing so pray in tongues. Well, I can't. Well, this went on for six weeks. And that guy would leave mad every Sunday night. He'd be so mad at me. Like it was my fault. I said, man, you just got to get your head out of the way. So I was going to go to Teen Challenge and speak. And we met in the parking lot over here. And he wanted to come. I said, okay. I said, guys, we're going to go. We're going to preach on the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to lay hands on these guys to be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. And he raises his hands. I said, yes. He goes, I, I don't pray in tongues. Again, that's not my fault. You're coming? This is what we're going to do. Okay. So he came. We preached. Here's the kicker. When I get there, the guy that was running the meeting that night came to me and he said, what's your, what's your uh, sermon on? I said, the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. Mm, that might not be a good idea. I said, what? I said, I'm, I'm like, you're somebody's of God, right? <laughs> you know, we're Pentecostal, right? He says, yeah, but we got, we got Catholics here. We got Presbyterians here. We got Methodists here. They might not receive that message. I said, okay. I said, we'll just see what happens, okay? Everybody ran to the front to be filled. So my friend, I said, I got these guys here. They're going to come. They're going to lay hands on you. And you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
So my friend went out and he laid hands on one guy and that guy started speaking in tongues. He laid hands on the second guy and he started speaking in tongues. And he came to me afterwards. He's crying, man. He's like, I got it. I got it. I got it. You know, sometimes we just, you know, whether it's because we've been taught wrongly, and I am going to say wrongly because the Holy Spirit in speaking in tongues is very definite for today. Can I hear an amen? Very definite for today. You know, um, and when these disciples got filled, the Holy Spirit fell on them. The Holy Spirit fell so heavy on them, the people thought they were drunk. I mean, they were stumbling around the Holy Spirit. I've seen our sister Sandy Tanner get so touched by the Holy Spirit that Pastor Dave would ask me to carry her to the car. And she's laughing all the way. <laughs> Man, when, you, when the Holy Spirit falls on you, it's okay, amen. I know Delanda and I, Pastor Dave was here praying with us a few weeks ago and the Holy Spirit fell on Delanda and I and all we could do was laugh. We just laughed and laughed and laughed and Scott and Vicky started laughing, Margaret started laughing. They're all at home, it's all online. <laughs> we get filled, amen. But I, I teach uh, in Bible school a class called hermeneutics. I've taught it a few times in very difficult class. And I'm going to probably do a Zoom class for anybody that really wants to get into it. Hermeneutics is how to interpret the word of God. How to, um, so you don't get off. And there's two words I want to talk to you out of hermeneutics today. One is normative and the second one is descriptive. So normative would ask the question, is the action, promise, or command confirmed and repeated in other passages of the Bible to make it normal? Descriptive would ask, is the action or command only a part of a cultural practice of the biblical person? Like um, greeting each other with a holy kiss. That's cultural. That's what they did over there. They greeted, they did it before they became Christians. You know, they just, you know, that's the culture there to greet with a holy kiss. With, And I, this lady that was taking my class from another church, her husband, whenever I saw him, he would kiss me. Now, I didn't care. I, I was okay with it. But I, when, when we were taking this class, I, I told her, I said, would you please tell your husband this is descriptive, not normative? Stop kissing me. <laughs> now don't tell Jake I said that because Jake always greets me with a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> and you love it. I do. I love it. Amen. <laughs> but there's certain sins that go throughout the Bible that are descriptive and not to be carried on. Amen. Certain things, you know, like we don't want to go around just because David committed adultery doesn't mean that we can go commit adultery, amen? Just because Solomon had uh, 300 wives and 700 concubines doesn't mean we can do that. That's right. It's descriptive, okay? Now, normative, as I said, is when the, the action, promise, or command is confirmed and repeated in other passages in the Bible. So there are normative things, promises, that are meant to be normal for us. Amen? To be a part of our everyday walk with God. I, I believe that healing should be normative in our lives. That we should walk in healing. Amen? Because that's something that we're empowered to do. Heal the sick. Amen? We should be able to just cast out demons. It should be normal to us to cast out demons. People see a demon-possessed person and they go the other way. Because, hey, listen, it ain't no joke. Speaking in tongues is normative. Let's look at the word. We looked at Acts chapter 2, where it started. They all spoke in tongues. Acts chapter 8, verse 14 through 17. It says, now the apostles were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God. They sent Peter and John to them, who then, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They had only been baptized in water. Okay. Verse 17, then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. 
Okay? So they've been baptized in water as a believer in Jesus, but not yet received the Holy Spirit. It's a two-part process. You believe in Christ, you give your life to Christ, and then there's the baptism of the Holy Spirit that comes to you, amen? That you get filled with the Spirit. It's a two-step two thing. So Acts chapter 10, Holy Spirit falls on the Gentiles, verse 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. So while Peter was still speaking, it fell. And then verse 45, and those of the circumcision who, be, who believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues in magnifying God. Okay, so now we've got three times, three instances. You think that's enough? It's not enough. Let me get one more. Acts chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. He told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house and who said to him, send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose sure name is Peter, who will tell you, these, tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them as, a, as upon us at the beginning. It happened again. You think that's enough? Four times? Wait, I got one more. One <laughs> I want you to be convinced. This is normative. It's not, it's not descriptive. It's normative. This is something that happened and needs to continue to be happening. Amen? In, in Acts 16, I mean Acts 19, 3 through 6, he said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized you with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him. That is Christ Jesus. Verse five, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were baptized in water. And when they laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Do we agree that this should be normal? Yeah. This is normal Christian behavior to speak in tongues. It, it's not just for a few, is for the believer. This is a promise from God. It, is, it, is, it occurs many times in the Bible. I've seen it happen thousands and thousands of times. And it is established that as a promise of God and the confirmation of the word of God, speaking in tongues is normative. It's for everybody. It is in agreement with the word of God, amen? It agrees with the word. And there's no scripture that cancels it out. There's nothing that cancels it out. Because when you go back, and, and I read this scripture already in John chapter 14, verse 17, the Holy Spirit will never, he's, he'll be in you forever. So when the Holy Spirit comes, he's here forever. He doesn't go away. When he came back then, 2,000 years ago, he hasn't been taken back up into heaven. He's here now, amen? The Holy Spirit is, is here with us right now. It's something, you know, when we start speaking in tongues, it should be the norm in our lives that we do it all the time, that we just do it. That, you know, I mean, I love to get in the shower and I love to pray in tongues in the shower. I just sing in the spirit. I just, I just flow in the shower. I'm, I'm a real good singer in there. And uh, <laughs> I just love to sing in the spirit. I love it. When, when we're worshiping, I love to just sing in the spirit. Just as Liz was doing this morning, as she's flowing in the spirit. It, it's because it, it, it's something that only God understands. God gets what I'm saying. God understands what I'm saying. Amen. It's something that edifies you. We need that edification. We need that encouragement. Speaking in tongues builds you up. Amen. It edifies you. Edification. Is, come here, Lana. Edification is like this. It, it's like you know, you knowing somebody's in need and you join hands with them and you help them. Okay, you lock with them. See, the Holy Spirit locks with you to help you to get where you need to be in the Lord, amen, to do the things that God. He doesn't, we're not left to ourselves. but edification is that joining together between you and the Holy Spirit so that God can do a work in you and through you, amen? Amen. You can sit down. <laughs> 
That's what the edification does to us. And we need to be edified, amen? And when I pray in tongues, this turns my spirit, man, up, amen? It turns my spirit into start hearing from heaven so that I can hear clear. I see better in the spirit what's happening. So when I start praying in tongues, God shows me things. He shows me things going on. You know, because when, like when Delanda and I are on, I point over here because we're always over here on Friday night praying. And when, when she's praying, when she's talking, I'm sitting there and I'm praying in tongues and God starts showing me things. I start seeing things as I'm praying in the spirit. It starts, I start getting that understanding of what God wants us to pray, of what God wants to say at that time. And so that's why we need to pray. It stirs you up. Amen. And it's something that the Holy Spirit can pray through you when you don't know how to pray. You know, cause you don't, uh, trust me, man, I get hit with a lot of things. I don't have a clue what to say. So I just pray in tongues because <laughs> I need the Holy Spirit to give me revelation. Amen. Praying in tongues. It's normal. We need the Holy Spirit to keep, to fill us and to keep getting filled so that we can keep doing the work that God has for us. That we can finish the work of Christ by telling everybody about Jesus. That's our job. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready to be filled today? Stand to your feet with me today. I'm not going to call you to the front. Just stand to your feet. We're going to be filled right now. You say, well, I'm already filled. You probably need filled again. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> I need to get filled all the time. Throw me a little music, Mario. Hallelujah. You ready to be filled today? Yeah. We're going to do three-step process. I'm going to ask you to repeat a prayer after me. And then I'm going to pray over you. And then when I say amen, we will all start praying in tongues. Every one of us. See, if, you, if you're really believing it and you're really going to receive right now, you're going to pray in tongues when I say amen. You're just going to start speaking out. You don't need anyone to lay hands on you. You just got to be open to the Spirit of God right now. And he's going to move in you right now. Are we in agreement? Yes. In agreement? Yes. Anybody not in agreement? I had one lady go. I was in Peru. Pastor Samuel, he's been here at this church. I was in his church. The lady stood there like this. I said, sit down. She went. Holy Spirit hit that lady so hard. She was on the floor screaming in tongues. <laughs> I had one man say, this can't be this easy. He says, but I'm going to do this anyways. And he did it. He just screamed in the spirit. Don't doubt God today. Just receive what he has for you. He's going to fill you right now. You ready? So repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son Jesus. That he died for me. That he rose from the dead. And he's sitting at your right hand. Jesus! Fill me with the promise of the Father. The Holy Spirit. Release in me today. My heavenly tongue. That I can begin to pray in the Spirit. Fill me, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now I'm going to pray for you. And then when I say amen, just start praying in tongues. Dear Heavenly Father, we've come before you and we've asked for the Spirit of God today. And Lord, this is your promise to us. And Lord, we see through your word, it is a normal thing in the kingdom of God. And I pray today for every person here, Father God, that you just fill us each one today, God. Whether we've been praying in the tongues for a long time or this is a new thing for us today. That Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, there's a release today of our heavenly language inside of each one of us God that it be so supernatural Father hey that Lord that no one can deny what you're doing inside of us Lord we glorify you God Holy Spirit fill us now in Jesus name Amen Oh, 
Borian bare ni basorian dare na kandare yere he ye shondare ni kire no la la ma Borian dare yere no la la basorian dare ni yere no la 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 baso Borian bare ni bi no la 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 basorian dare ni kire no la ni ye Borian bare ni bi so ye let it flow God let it flow Borian dare yere no la la baso Borian dare ye si pare ni bi no la moho la ba 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 si kire ni ye yo. Ye shandari ye yirunu no ho ura mama ha ishikiri no no ho ri andare ni ye na no no ma ye na no ma ni bi ni ye be filled be filled be filled ori andare ni bi so yeah you got to speak you got to speak speak open your mouth and he'll fill it ori andare ni bi so ri andare ni ni na 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 ba so ori andare ni bi na na bare ni ba na ba so ri andare ni ye Borian bare ni bire no no bare ni bire no 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 borian dare ni die re no ba Oh Holy Spirit fill this place Borian bare ni bi so Yes andare die re no 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 bare ni bire no no bare ni bire die Oh andare ye Borian dare ni re no 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 Break through, break through, break through today. Ori amare ne masori andare ni ni e. Let it flow, God. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Ori amare ne bisori andare ni ni e. Yeah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, shandare ye ne na mare ni bi ni 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 la 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 ma. Ori amare ne bisori. Glorify you, God. We exalt you, Lord. Oh, yeah, let it flow, God. Let it flow, God. Oh, yeah, let it flow, let it flow, God. 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 They prayed in tongues and they prophesied. Priscilla, you said you had a prophetic word for us. Come on, if I could get a microphone, please. Microphone. Okay. Maggie, I need your microphone. Okay. in your life. 
life. Just like Pastor was speaking about. So prepare to be used by me to be a tremendous blessing wherever you go. All who surrender, all who surround you, will see my blessing and my favor upon your life. And you shall be a great light shining for me in this end time hour, says the Lord. God Amen. bless you. Amen. Amen. Good morning. You know, I know most of you have been filled with the Spirit and you've spoken in tongues before. And um, maybe if you're a kid here, you've done it in camp and or youth camp. And I want to remind you what happens when you want chocolate milk you pour yourself a glass of milk and then you pour your chocolate and it, and if it's liquid it goes to the bottom right do you have chocolate milk when you pour chocolate and you leave it there in the bottom no what do you have to do stir it up you have to stir it up and to stir up the whole, your your language you have to practice that you can't just speak in tongues when you come to church on Sunday once a week for an hour Amen? Is that going to edify your spirit? No. The last time I got on a plane, I, had a, I started having a panic attack. And it was cramping. My neck was cramping up. And I started sweating. And I kept thinking. All I kept thinking, and this is just from the pit of hell. Because all I was thinking was, I need to find the door and I need to get out of this plane. And I remember, well, we're flying, so that would be bad. <laughs> and and I, I kept thinking, but that's very evil. Because I was like, I don't care. I need to get out of here. And so nothing, nothing helped. I prayed with my Spanish language. I prayed out loud, nothing. I got up to the restroom, splashed myself with water, nothing. I was... I was sweating and I was thinking, I'm going to die here right now because it's, I just felt so. And I sat down and, and uh, I'm like, I need to pray. And I prayed over myself, nothing. And I'm like, I need to pray in tongues because it's going to edify my spirit. And what's going to get stronger, your spirit or your soul? Yeah. Is my emotions right now that the, the fear I'm feeling, is it going to be stronger or is the spirit going to be stronger? And I started speaking in tongues out loud. And the person next to me was like, Ugh. And I spoke for like a minute and I fell asleep like that. And I slept the whole flight. Calm. And I, I, I told, we spoke about it with Terry and I said, if I've had panic attacks before and mental health is important but reading a book can help you so saying some nice words to yourself can help you but speaking in tongues when you stir up that spirit it edifies you don't just do when you come to church right. amen 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 do it all the time. You say, well, I didn't pray in tongues today. It's okay. Go ahead and do it tomorrow. Do it. Just do it. Sometimes we got to get our thinking out of the way, you know, um, because it's different. It's, it is different. But let the Holy Spirit just fill you. Father, I pray today, Lord, over every person in here as we we go our way that your spirit would move into every person every day. That Lord, as Lucia even said, that we'd stir it up. We'd stir it up. And we'd pray every day in the spirit. And Lord, I pray that you release people's tongues today, God. That Lord, that they could flow with you and it'd be supernatural what happens in them, God. And Father, that we don't just pray in tongues. But Lord, in your edification of our hearts and our minds, Lord, I pray that old things are passed away and all things become new in our lives. That Lord, your joy would be our strength. That Lord, your love would abound in each one of us. 
and that, Lord, we just continually be changed and transformed. I just As we were praying, I just heard the Lord say, there's somebody here that you've really been struggling with patience over a certain situation. And the Lord would say, if you give him that thing today, he'll take care of it for you. You know, your patience has been, ah. And um, God said, if you just give it to me, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of it. Does anybody else have a prophetic word? Maggie? The spirit of God has just been so strong since I couldn't even sing. But I was sharing with Liz and my husband that yesterday God just gave me a word and I knew it was for the church. And God just <sighs> detox. You need to detox. You know how sometimes we detox in, in our health, but we need to detox spiritually. And for some of you, when you your home has become something negative and God wants you to change the atmosphere. I don't know what could it, what could it, what it could be, but God wants you to just change the atmosphere. Worship him at home because for some of you, the enemy knows where to get you at home. It, it, it could be through a family member, through whatever it could be, because you know, when we've been in quarantine, it's so easy to get in our thoughts at home, but God wants you to change the atmosphere. So I don't know for who, for whoever that is, but I just want to pray really quick. Yeah. So Father God, I just pray for whoever needs to detox spiritually, Lord. I just pray that right now, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, for whoever is struggling, Lord, in their faith that says, Lord, I want to speak in tongues, but I just feel like I just can't. We rebuke that lie from the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. And we just declare the Holy Spirit in you right now. Because the Holy Spirit is there. You just need to give him a chance. You've been holding on for too long. And God says, don't hold on, child. Just be set free. So Lord, we just pray right now for that freedom. And whatever the enemy has been lying to them that they say you can't speak in tongues. We rebuke that right now. And we say speak right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, speak now, says the Lord. Speak now, child. Don't care about your neighbor or who's going to judge you. Don't care about who's watching you. Some of you are just embarrassed. It's not. Don't be embarrassed because the Lord is good. His goodness is good. Touch him right now, God. Lord, whoever it, it is. God. Freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Freedom right now. Freedom right now. Freedom right now. You feel right now in the name of Jesus. Change the atmosphere in your home. Change the atmosphere. Detox because the Lord wants to show you. The Lord wants to give you dreams and the Lord will speak to you. We just praise you right now, Lord, and we break those chains, Lord. We break that bondage in the name of Jesus, Lord. We just praise you in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, just flow right now. Let yeah. healing just be the norm in this house, God. Healing. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Mm. Just 
receive it right now. Healing. Give you the glory, Lord. We thank you right now for healing. Yeah, let it rain down, God. Healing. Flow. In Jesus' name. Bless and protect everyone, Lord, as they go their way today. Let your hand be upon them, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go in the name of the Lord and be blessed. Amen. amen. And go and do the work that he's called you to do.